Hi, I'm Cam from the Nurburg Review, where I strive to broaden your fantasy horizons. If you have already watched my short video, you will know that I will be recording most of my shorter videos, at the very least, in my tractor. I spend about 50 hours a week in this tractor, and when you're composting, you only move about a quarter of a mile an hour. So I can read and record videos while working. I've been recording a podcast in the tractor as well for the last few months. I also have about 80 episodes in the backlog. If you're interested in listening to any of those, uh, they're available on any platform that you might listen to a podcast, also under the Nerdbook Review name. Uh, my old ones almost all include other people. Uh, my wife is on most of the very beginning ones. Um, I also end up having a bunch of buddies that came on. Um, my wife decided that she is the kind of person that if she's gonna start a series, she's gonna finish a series. So uh, she didn't turn out to be the greatest podcast host uh, because she didn't want to stop reading a series once she started. And that's where Barry and Chris especially came into play. Now on to the why should you listen to me talk about books thing. Well, I have read thousands of books over the course of about 30 years. Uh, I started off reading the Redwall books when I was a kid and I loved those anthropomorphic animals. I was so sad the first time a uh, Martin the Mouse was not the main character in the uh, one of the books that I read and had actually been dead for a long time. I remember that uh, being one of the first senses of mortality, even though I was only like nine or ten years old. I also read Goosebumps and things like that. You know, a lot of the standard kid stuff that you would read in the 90s. Early on in my freshman year of high school, I was sitting in my English class being just a little bit too talkative for everyone else's good. And my English teacher set a copy of The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan in my hand. He told me to read this instead of talking during class. And by the time that year was done, I had read the first four books in the series. Uh, clearly, it was not the uh, most intellectually uh, challenging English class I've ever taken in my life. But it was one of my favorite classes, though. Uh, her husband was a huge fantasy fan, and uh, so he had those first four books and let me read each of those. And I stayed quiet the entire year. After that point, then I started reading all of the typical fantasy stuff that was available in the 90s. One thing to remember is that there was no Amazon to easily get uh, books to order. And I lived in rural Idaho. I was about uh, 30, 40 minutes from the nearest bookstore. So when I did get a chance to go get books, I almost always bought the big doorstopper fantasy novels. Uh, I read a lot of Terry Goodkind, uh, not a huge fan of it. As I carried on, I think I actually only managed the first three books before I was just like, I can't keep doing this. But I read the sort of Shannara. Uh, I finished up uh, reading whatever Wheel of Time book was available at that. I think six of them were available when I first got to uh, the end point in one of the books. Then uh, I read, uh, of course, I read The Lord of the Rings and Tolkien and stuff like that. Then I also read a lot of the Forgotten Realms books, uh, Dragonlance, stuff like that, because that was available in the bookstores. There also wasn't a whole lot of fantasy available in libraries at that point yet either. In college, I majored in history and theology. Uh, those are both very reading intensive majors, so I didn't have an awful lot of time to spend reading um, for funsies at that point. Um, so once I got done with college, though, I got right back into reading fantasy. Uh, in fact, I think the first series that I read right after college would have been The Song of Ice and Fire, uh, maybe Game of Thrones is what you'll know it as. But that was uh, my introduction to Grimdark, which became my favorite genre for a good solid 10, 15 years. Um, I really loved those books. And um, because of them, I, I definitely broadened my horizons a little bit in terms of what I was reading uh, from just pure epic fantasy to uh, a lot more Grimdark stuff. Obviously, uh, I then bought the entire box set of the Black Company, uh, the Glenn Cook books, and read all of those. Uh, I love those as well. I love the grittiness and the realism of them, where uh, the Chronicler wasn't uh, a, a great hero. Uh, he was the, uh, the, um, the scribe and stuff. So I definitely have always found myself liking more character-driven stuff. And so that's definitely something that I will talk about if, when I'm doing a review. Uh, one other series that I also want to talk about that I read that I feel like is criminally underrated when it comes to the grimdark genre is the Acts of Cain series by Matthew Stoddard. 
it is a sci-fi fantasy the way it should be categorized but i think that it should sit up there with uh, richard morgan and george r, r. martin in the uh, grim dark uh pantheon myself i'm definitely talking about that at some point uh, reading grim dark brought me to an author who both his works were influential to me but also something that he started uh, definitely changed my reading habits completely uh, mark lawrence has uh, three series out currently in the uh, fantasy genre. Um, Broken Empire trilogy, that was his first one. Red Queen's War was set in the same world. And then also the Red Sister books. I'm a huge fan of Mark Lawrence's work, especially because he is an author that can do in three to 400 pages what an awful lot of the older uh, fantasy um, authors would take a good solid 800 to 1,000 pages to do. He doesn't have any unnecessary flowery language. He gets right to the point, and his, I just really like his writing style. But probably the most important thing that Mark Lawrence did, in as far as my reading habits go, is he started a competition called the Self-Published Fantasy Blog Off. So Spiffbo is a competition of 300 self-published fantasy books split into 10 blogs each blog gets 30 books they will eventually whittle their way down to one finalist then each of the 10 blogs will read all 10 of the finalists they will rate them and review them and the book that has the highest review will win the competition and also it seems like pretty frequently get an orbit book deal orbit definitely seems to be the uh the, the big publisher that picks up the most of these uh spiffbo uh top books. Before Spiffo, I was like many of you guys where I just certainly never thought about reading um, reading indie authors because I just assumed that there was a reason why they hadn't been picked up by a publisher. Now after Spiffo, especially by the time you get into those semi-finalists and finalists and you just see such quality stuff, what I've often learned is that the reason they haven't been picked up by publishers is because they just simply don't fit neatly into a box. They're not specifically grimdark. They're not specifically epic fantasy. Maybe they're uh, character driven or um, heavy on the world building in a way that doesn't get quite to the action as fast as some of the uh, of the big publishers would like you to do to, to you know make sure that you have the most mass appeal. So sometimes these authors are still going to be selling lots of books. Look at Hugh Howey with his Wool series. Uh, it is now Silo on um, Apple Plus, and which is actually an amazing adaptation, by the way. Um, he managed to sell, you know, millions of copies. Um, there's definitely a lot of people that are putting out uh, indie books and they're self-publishing. There's even people that are doing hybrid. I actually just, uh, I talked with Michael J. Sullivan, an author who has one of my favorite um, audiobooks of all time with his Age of Myth series. And he is self-publishing that series currently as well. So there's absolutely an awful lot of uh, high quality authors putting out self-published stuff. Now, I think that one of the reasons why I've found that I like the self-published stuff so much is I do love world building and character driven stories. And I think sometimes you're able to get a little bit more of that where the story uh, isn't all just about action. Now, there's always plenty of action too, but I think that uh, when I have a character who I care about um, and that, you know, makes smart decisions and isn't just doing dumb things that, that lead them to the to the, having to do get into action, then um, I find that I enjoy the books a whole lot more. Um, about the time that Spiffo was taking off to is when I also started my podcast. A lot of the early episodes of my podcast will be in the authors. I plan on continuing to do that with all of my video stuff as well. I think that I will probably end up being somewhere between 60, 40, 70, 30 uh, in the authors versus the big publishers. Um, maybe towards the 60% side because there's actually quite a few authors that I still enjoy who have those Orbit deals now and they're certainly not indie authors anymore. I think if I do that mix, it's going to be a good way that we can still get all the big names that you guys are all interested in. Also help you find um, authors that you might not know about. I know that uh, like Richard Nell, he has a character named Ruka in his Ash and Sand series that might be my favorite character in all of fantasy now. And if not, it's only second behind Matt. And then you have uh, M.D. Presley. His world building in his Soul's Harvest books is just absolutely amazing. Uh, you don't see a ton of uh, Civil War-inspired fantasy books like that one. 
Uh, one thing, if you do look at my past podcast episodes or my Goodreads ratings, all of them are available under the Nerdbook Review, um, you're going to see a lot of really high scores. I think that like 4.25 or somewhere in that range is what my overall rating is. That's not because I am easily amused and have low standards. That's going to be because I don't really feel like it's uh, necessary to uh, rate a lot of one and two star books, especially when I'm dealing with indie authors. Um, my biggest tendency is if I don't think a book is at least a three star, then I just will stop reading it, carry on. I think of myself as a positive person, and I just don't really like putting negativity out there, especially when I'm dealing with uh, indie authors, right? There's not a reason for me to, uh, to write 10 negative reviews when I don't think that that author or that book is worth reading anyways. A lot of the reviews that I put out there, I'm going to kind of put those as a stamp of approval that I think that they're books that are worth reading. Um, obviously, sometimes when I'm reading the bigger books, that's going to, they'll have an, a little bit lower of a rating because, you know, there's going to be thousands or tens of thousands of reviews even. So my one review is not going to tank everything. So as a general rule, um, in the past, I've only put out podcast episodes, even if I thought a book was a four star or above. So you're going to see a... Uh, generally high scores when we're talking about that stuff. I will also put out a mix of like my favorite characters, all, you know, put a tier of all the books that I've read for the month and, and where I think they are as far as ratings wise. I'll do indie author spotlights because uh, I have found quite a few authors that I really think are, are absolutely stellar authors that aren't going to be in the mainstream or easy to find that I think are worth reading. I'll always be talking about what kind of genre they are, whether they're action-centered or character-driven or what they are, but I will make sure to uh, give a pretty thorough review. Um, I'll talk about who the audience is, who the audience isn't. Um, I have kids, so I know uh, that while they might be a little bit on the young side, um, I'm hoping that my son gets into Redwall here pretty soon because I would love to, to go over those books again with him. Um, then at some point they're going to be you know, older readers and I will... Uh, we want to talk about whether the book is age appropriate for them or not. Um, I am a reader that is not easily offended. Obviously, if I was a grimdark fan, but I'll, I will make sure to you know mention if there's sexual assault or something like that, so that if that is something that would trigger you, that you'll know about that. But um, you know, I just recently read a romanticy novel where there was you know plenty of uh, sex scenes, and I still, I mean, it's probably my favorite of the Spiffbo winners now. So I absolutely um, am not someone that is not going to read a book because there's something in it. So I will be sure to you know mention those things though when I do a review. I hope that after uh, watching this little bit longer intro that um, you will decide that I'm someone that you want to listen to talk about books. Like I said, I've read thousands of books over over course of over 30 years and I hope to read thousands more in uh, the next hopefully 30 years. So if you made it to the end of this, thank you. I appreciate it. And hopefully I will have many more reviews. Thanks. Bye.